Lantos Revealed, Unmasking the Forgotten God of Concealment Who is Lantos in Greek mythology? In Greek mythology, Lantos, Lelantis, was the son of Coeus and Phoebe and was a titan deity. Leto and Asteria's sibling, he was. According to the Dionysica of Nonus, he was the spouse of Paraboa and had a daughter, Aura, early 5th century AD. He became the titan of air, hunter's skill of pursuing prey, and the unseen since his name meant something that goes unnoticed. Leto's male counterpart appears to be Lantos, and his daughter, the virgin huntress Aura, Breeze, appears to be Leto's daughter Artemis. Introduction to Lantos Very little is known of the Titans, much less, the younger Titans, those who were believed to have dominion over the world's more natural features such as the sea, the earth, the sky or in today's episode, the air. Lantos, a more ethereal god than we've come to expect, was thought to have been formless, or at least, moved unseen through the world, much as the wind does. Yet, as we still today feel the wind through our hair or against our skin, the ancient Greeks once attributed such a sensation to the presence of Lantos. As far as the etymology of his name goes, Lantos was believed to have derived from the Greek words letho, lanthano, and lelathon, meaning to either escape or to move unseen. This would make sense given the Lantos' association with the wind, that which is unseen. It might also link in with Lanto's association with hunting, where he was also believed to be a deity who assisted hunters in the wild, aiding them in their attempts to move upon prey without detection. Family Tree of Lantos Despite being relatively unknown in the mythology, his parentage would suggest otherwise. His father was said to have been the Titan Coius, he who was a titan of inquisitive minds in questioning, as well as one of the four essential pillars of the world during the reign of the once almighty Cronus. Lanto's mother meanwhile was Phoebe, the titan goddess of bright intellect. With this in mind, it would suggest that Lantos was something of a long-lost sibling of the titans Leto and Asteria, however, an accurate family tree of the wind deity is yet to be established, especially given how he appears to be overlooked by many Greek writers and poets. In this, there may be a suggestion that as the air, negation negation or a physical representation of it, Lantos was not necessarily born to the world, but was always a part of it, having manifested from the atmosphere. Though, this would contradict his classification as a second generation titan. Another interesting idea presents Lantos as the male counterpart to the titan Leto, the goddess of motherhood. This comes about because Aura, the daughter of Lantos was considered to be the counterpart to Leto's daughter Artemis. Sources, however, are not concrete on this idea and no writer makes any real association to such a claim. The closest we get to any writer exploring Lantos at all is the epic Greek poet Nanus, who speaks of the god in his Dionysica, though even here, much of the focus is aimed towards his daughter Aura. We are told. There in Phrygia grew Aura the mountain maiden of Rindicus and hunted over the foothills of Rocky Dindemon. She was unacquainted with love. Like a younger Artemis, this daughter of Lantos, for the father of this stormfoot girl was ancient Lantos the Titan, who wedded Parabia, a daughter of Oceanus, a man-like maid she was, who knew nothing of Aphrodite. Here, we are told of Aura, the daughter of Lantos who Nanus explains was like a younger version of Artemis. It is by a daughter of Oceanus in Parabia, that Lantos was believed to have been married to, and it was through her that Aura was conceived. There is an implication here by Nanus that Aura was by no means a looker. Indeed, he specifies that Aura had the look and build of a man and that she knew nothing of Aphrodite, or that she was far from beautiful. Whilst not specified here by Nanus, we also understand that Aura did indeed take after her father, for whilst he was considered to be a god of the winds, she was once considered to be a goddess of the breeze. This is concurrent with other offspring of deities who would either adopt a portion of their parents' dominion or usurp the entire dominion for themselves. In Aura's case, it would seem she only embraced a portion of her father's power, who agrees to be more specific and did not appear to possess the ambition to seek more. Lanto's Influence on Greek Mythology 
Lanto certainly falls into one of the more awkward and shamefully overlooked periods of Greek mythology. As a second-generation titan, he wasn't recognized as a primordial or any sort of originator and he didn't serve in any capacity during the Great Titanomachy. Essentially, Lantos would be one of the many titans who were ultimately overshadowed by the dominion of Zeus. However, you might say that his invisibility during this period is quite fitting to his character, a god who, like the air, goes unseen. Moreover, given that he was believed to be the aid of hunters, or an essence that represented their necessary stealth and vigilance that a hunter would require, him being relatively removed from the narrative would make sense and may even have been by his design. Indeed, it is believed by some scholars that the presence of Lantos could have been more significant, but because he personified the formless state of the wind, he would not have been perceived. In conclusion, it's not uncommon that in a world as vast and vivid as Greek mythology that some gods would outshine others and some, like Lantos, would get left by the wayside. It's an unfortunate truth when we look at any ancient mythology that there may be no retribution for some of these sideline deities, especially with the more interesting ones such as Lantos. Indeed, the only surviving account of Lantos does appear to be from Nonus Dionysica, but beyond this, we may never know the true meaning behind Lantos as either a god who aided hunters or a god who controlled the winds. <laughs>